Hello friends. My name is Shubhrata. From a long time I was thinking to teach variety of courses to maximum number of students. With this intention in mind, I am starting a new playlist in my YouTube channel named Courses where I plan to incorporate variety of courses in simple language so that people from any field of any age can understand it easily i hope you all will like it i have a request that if you like the way of teaching then please press the like button and subscribe it to get further notifications regarding the subject Please also share it with your friends so that maximum number of students get benefited. If you have any suggestion or query regarding the subject, please mention it in the description box and I will try my best to sort it out. Presently in this playlist course i am introducing a new programming language named java we know that java is an object oriented language it was developed by a team led by james gosling and it was first released by sun microsystem in the year 1995 it is very popular due to its diverse applications from android to web it is platform independent many software developers prefer java for writing applications involving scientific calculations and mathematical operations in this course i will discuss everything in simple language with a lot of examples so that any beginner can grasp the concepts easily and will be able to build applications of their own now let me tell you the contents of this video first of all i will discuss the types of paradigm and the emergence of oops then i will discuss the basic concepts of oops and java after that i will discuss about the installation of java or what softwares are required to install java then i will write the first program of java and show you the procedure of writing the first program after writing the first program i will show you the procedure of execution of the first program of java paradigm means a way of thinking or doing things it is an organizing principle of a program it is an approach to programming there are two types of paradigm procedural or modular secondly object oriented programming a program in a procedural language consists of what it consists of a list of instructions where each statement tells the computer to do something 
so the focus is on processing languages which support this paradigm provides facilities for passing data values to functions and return values from functions so the emphasis in this paradigm is on doing things in procedural programming data types are used and worked upon by many function if a function makes any change to a data type then it must be reflected to all the locations or functions within the program that process this data type hence it is very time consuming if the program is of large size procedural programming does not also model real world very well modular programming is an extension of procedural programming which we have discussed previously now in this a big program is divided into smaller parts which are known as modules in modules the pieces of code within the program can be identified and it consists of a set of inputs and outputs now let me explain you the concept of object oriented programming object oriented programming is a method of implementation in which programs are organized as collection of objects each of which represents an instance of some class and whose classes are all members of a hierarchy of class united via inheritance relationship now let me discuss what led to the emergence of object oriented programming paradigm we know that the procedural programming paradigm had very shortcomings the shortcomings are that procedural program paradigm they emphasized on procedures rather than data it requires the need for propagating updates it is not able to model real world well the object oriented approach overcomes the shortcoming in the following way object oriented programming approach gives data the prime consideration and by providing an interface to the functions associated with it an object is a complete entity that is it has all the data and associated functions within it whenever something is to be changed for an object only its class get changed because it is complete in itself all the functions that are working on this data or using it are defined within the class they get to see the change immediately and no other change is required it is just like the way we replace a defective part for instance a transistor is an equipment since a transistor is a complete part complete with its component and interface a defective transistor can be replaced with a new transistor 
without altering the rest of the machinery. Similarly, if we make a software complete in its component and its interface, such a software can easily be replaced with a new one without altering the rest of the software. There are many reasons for the emergence of OOPS paradigm from the programming approach. One of the reasons is emphasis on procedures rather than data. Programs following procedural programming approach focuses on procedures for solution of a problem. They do not pay heed on data and give data second class status. They give more stress to algorithm. In procedural programming approach, data values are passed to functions and return values from functions. But we know that due to data only program existed. For example, in inventory program, inventory data is the main or of prime importance than the function that displays or checks data. This demerit is overcome in object oriented programming approach. In object oriented programming, Data is given the prime importance by providing an interface through the functions associated with it. Another reason for the emergence of object-oriented programming approach from procedural programming approach is the need for propagating updates. What do you mean by this? In procedural programming approach, the data types are used and worked by many functions. Hence, if a function makes any change to a data type, then it must be reflected to all the locations of functions within the program. This is very time consuming for large size program. This problem is overcome in object oriented programming approach. The object oriented programming approach views the problem as objects which is a complete entity. It has all the data and associated functions within it. So whenever something is to be changed for an object, only the class gets changed because it is complete in itself. All the functions that are working on this data or using it are defined within the class. So changes are shown immediately. Another reason for the emergence of object-oriented programming approach is that procedural programming does not model real world properly. For example, vehicle is an object. It is capable of moving in the real world. However, Procedural programming considers only the procedure of moving parts and not the vehicle.
Now, I will explain you some of the basic concepts of object-oriented programming in short. From the next video, we will find the concepts explained along with program for each of them. But in this video, I will explain only the concepts and give a little idea about the programming for each of them. Now, before going into the intricacies of object-oriented programming concepts, let us know about the fundamental concept of object-oriented programming and that is known as class. But before understanding the fundamental concept of class, we must know about the term object. So, anything which we can see in the real world are known as objects in real world. For example, the pen, the book, the television, the door, the fruits like orange, apple, they all are objects. Even the animals like cat, dog, they are also considered as objects in the real world. Now there are two characteristics of object. They are state and behavior. Let us consider the object orange. So why it is uh, an object? Why orange is an object? Orange, the color of the orange is yellow or green and orange is spherical in shape. Hence, orange is an object. Similarly, why dog is an object? Dog is an object because it has four legs. It has a tail. It is white or black in color. So, these are the state of the object, dog. Similarly, dog can bark, dog can run, dog can eat, dog can sleep. So, these are the different activities of dog. Hence, it has a behavior. As this dog consists of state and behavior. Hence, it is an object. Similarly, in computers, objects refer to those things which has a state and which has a behavior. The computer objects are those objects that have a state. Now state refers to the amount of memory in it, the size of the hard disk, the operating system used by the computer. 
So these are the examples of state of an object. Now, the behavior of computer object refers to refers to what? The behavior is giving the output by displaying on the screen. Shutting down of the computer, booting of the computer, producing a beep sound or any sound while doing any operation. So these are the behavior or functions of the computer related object. Hence, we find that object in computer or software objects refer to those items which have a state as well as a behavior. Now, when a group of objects having similar characteristics are grouped together, they form a class. So, a class is a blueprint of an object. The class is used for creating objects. Therefore, an object is an entity that can be identified. It has certain characteristics, certain behavior or methods and objects have a state. Objects are also known as instances of a class. So these are the examples of objects like Opel Astra, Maruti Suzuki, mobile phone, Swift, Zen, table. Now let me take for example mobile phone. This mobile phone has certain color. It has certain shape. So these are the state of an object. It has certain functions like calculation to uh, switch on the internet, to play the games, to phone some other persons. So these are the functions of the mobile phone. Hence, mobile as it has a state and a behavior it is known as an object. Similarly, Opel Astra, it has certain color, it has doors, it has a steering wheel. So, these are the characteristic or state of the object Opel Astra. Now, this, this car can be used for steering purpose. It can be made for halting. It can be accelerated. 
as these are the functions of the object. Therefore, this opalastra is called an object. Now, we will discuss another concept that is class. We have discussed now with the term object. Presently, we are discussing the term class. Now, when a number of objects who have similar types of characteristics, similar type of states, are grouped together, then they form class. So, class is also called the blueprint of an object. It is a template for creating an object. Now let me take the example of class. For example here, we are finding the Opel Astra, the Maruti Suzuki, the Swift and the Zane car. Now do you find that there is something similar about them? What are they? They have certain color, they have four wheels, they have gear, they have accelerator, they have brake, they have two lights in front and two lights at the back. So they are similar in certain way. That is the state, they have got a state. Now, they can run. They can accelerate, they can use the brake, they can play music system. So these are the functions of the different cars. So they have characteristic, they have same behavior. Hence, when a group of similar objects who have same characteristic or behavior are grouped together, that is known as a class. And here the name of the class is car. Similarly, in the second example, we are finding that there are three animals, types of animals, that is dog, cat, cow. Now, they have four legs. They have certain colors. So, these are the states of the dog, cat and cow. And they have certain function also, that is to make certain sounds, to run, to eat, to sleep. So these are the functions of the uh, objects. As they are of the same type and they share common characteristics between them, they are under the class animal. Next is we are taking different types of fruits. Now like there are apple, there are mango, there are guava, there are oranges etc. Now these fruits they have certain color, 
they have certain shapes so they have certain state similarly they are juicy they are sweet or or they are sour to it hence they have certain behavior in it so these objects who have similar behavior or state are grouped together under one class that is the class is fruit hence we find that a group of similar object is under a single unit entity that is class in java we write a class in the following way like first we write public class main the class should be always written by the it should start with the capital letter then we are placing the bracket then we are writing public static void main string argus then we are writing here the code system dot out dot print ln welcome so this code system dot out dot print ln is used to display the message on the screen and here always we start or we mention the name of the class by the we should start in capital letters now let us write the program in java that is intellij software or we must install certain packages for running the java programs in our computer already those packages have been loaded so at this moment i can just only give you the hints how to download those packages so in this video we are going to download and install amazon coreto jdk version 11 for windows platform for that we will go to the google search bar where is it we will write amazon coreto 11 then the first link that is is the doc docs aws amazon.com we will click here there are various download procedure for various systems operating systems like linux windows mac os docs etc so we will download as per our operating system so if we are using windows we will click on windows if we are using linux we will click on linux if we are using mac os we will click on mac os 
if we are clicking on windows then we will find various versions of amazon corretto in windows there are two versions in of windows that is x64 bit and x86 bit x64 bit is the for the operating system 64 bit and x86 is for 32 bits operating system so this relates to the windows version which is running on the computer as i am using the 64 bit operating system so i download 64 bit if you if you have 32 bit operating system download 32 bit then go to msi link to the right side and click on that then it is downloaded click on the open file then close the browser and click on next then you can see the default locator location and then click on next and install them you will be prompted to make changes to your device then click on yes and in this way the amazon Corito is installed here i cannot show you as it has already been installed then you have to click on finish to exit the setup wizard Here we will use the ID called IntelliJ IDEA. In ID we write programs. Now in order to write the programs we use IDE. See IntelliJ IDEA we have already here the community edition. And it is used as a compiler also because it compiles and runs the program for us. We are using IntelliJ IDEA created by whom? JetBrains. We download the latest version from JetBrains website. So search JetBrains.com then go to tools. See here you will search here this is the search engine you will write jetbrains.com and here you will click here you will find the tools try under the tools you will find IntelliJ idea then click on download you can download the community edition if you want for free. If you can pay, then you download ultimate edition. Then allow the app to make changes to your device and click next and then check 64 bit. Then click appropriate launcher for system. Then click next and then again click next and install the community edition then click on finish. In this way we will load the IntelliJ idea as this is also been loaded we just gave you the instructions to load the IntelliJ idea. So these two things if you load then you can write any program on java now we have discussed the object classes concept and now we have come to know that real time objects or real objects and the software related objects they are mostly the same 
they have certain characteristic uh, or state and they have certain behavior. Now, let us see how can we create a class. So, we are using the software IntelliJ IDEA which is the free edition, community edition is a free edition and we are clicking on it. Now, this edition is loaded and now we want to create a new project. So, how will we create a new project? We will click on the new project. After clicking on the new project, we have to see, we have to check whether Java is there. See, Java modules are used for developing JVM based desktop. So, Java is there. Next, we have to see whether the project SDK has Coreto 11 version. So, this is Amazon Coreto version 11. It's checked. After that, we will click on next. Then we can create the project from template. So, we will click on it. And then we click on next. After that, we can give a project name that is stream. And here we can give a base package. If we don't want to give any base package, we will not give. Then we will click on finish. As soon as you click on finish, now you are seeing that some classes, the, some codes have come. So this is the code for creating a class. That is here the name of the class is main and the first letter is capital. And this is the class and this is is public. Public means what? Public means it can be accessed from any class. There is no restriction. So, when we are using the IntelliJ IDEA, IntelliJ IDEA automatically creates the class for you. And not only that, they create also a method along with it. That is the main method. The main method is public means it can be accessed by anyone it's static it's void so void means it has no return type and the other things will be explained by me in the later videos so whenever i will start the programming concept i will explain you each and every term of the syntax so for now, uh, you know that in order to create a class, we must use an access modifier that is at the public and the, the name of the class will be written uh, with the first letter as capital letter. Then, after that, so the next question can come to your mind that why do we use a class? What is the utility? We require class to re remove the limitation of primitive data types. See, the primitive data types like int, float, these are the primitive data types. But they have certain limitations. They are not user-defined data type. So, when we are creating a class, we 
it becomes a user defined data type and we can use that to uh, achieve our goals so we are seeing here that whenever we are creating a project new project always a class is created automatically along with a method and we are also noticing that the method name is in lower case but the class name the first letter of the class name is in upper case now suppose we want to create our own class how do we create so we will see whether the project is open or not project area we will click on the arrow then what we will do we will see the src src means the source then if we are creating a package the package name will come but if we are not creating a package no names will come and then we will right click on src then we will select the new option and we will create select the java class then we will write the name of the class like uh, any class animal so animal is a class and then we will click on okay see we, a new class animal is created and always see one thing some wrong is there how we have written the animal class but it the first letter should be capital so this thing we must always keep in our mind then we are using public public means what it is an access modifier it means it means that we allow everybody to access the class or use the class for public access modifier there is no restriction but if we had mentioned it as private then the other classes could not access it protected allows classes in the package to access the class so there are three types of access modifier that is public one is private and the other is protected so here we are declaring the class what is the use of class it creates object so in order to make the class active we must create some objects or variables the variables inside method they are local variable which cannot be accessed from outside the method so classes allows the user to create variable which are known as member variable and they are accessible from anywhere within the class member variable are also called fields so to create a field for a class access modifier must be mentioned for example in the class animal they have eyes eyes means how many eyes are there two 
so it's int integer so that is access modifier is private private int is okay so when we are defining the fields in java we are mentioning as private but in case of declaring the class we are mentioning as public similarly all like color color is what character variable so this is private private color color is what string type so we have to write string Okay. So these variables are referred to as state and there are certain methods which are the behavior. So we have already created this and we have to return to the main java then what we will do we have to create the object how will we do that so we will write animal.java we will write here um, animal animal the object name obj any object name equal to new animal so this is initializing the object The rest, the remaining portions, I will explain to you in other videos because this video is only telling the synopsis, the basic things of class. The remaining portion, I will give you a detailed explanation along with programs in the next video.